Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be answering a question about black holes. But specifically we're actually going to talk about the tidal effects that black holes cause that may shred things apart like you see in the video right now. Welcome to What The Math. Now, one of the things I always wonder about in regards to the supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy, known as Sagittarius A star, is how much effect does it actually have on us here on planet Earth? Now, there's one way of measuring this, and this is by using what's known as tidal effects. Tidal effects, as you know, uh, can actually create anything from this, basically shredding things apart, to things that are more common to us, like, for example, tides. So the fact that water goes up and down, uh, depending on the location of the moon and the sun, is essentially tides. And, um, and the more scientific explanation for how all of this happened and what tides are, Basically, it's a force, and it's a force that uh, stretches a body towards the center of mass of another body based on the gradient um, of gravitational field uh, between them. And uh, normally, a very strong body will produce a lot of tidal effects on a much smaller body. So, for example, here, if I were to take, let's say, Titan, and place it around Earth right here. Uh, because Titan's mass is a lot less, and its gravity is a lot less than Earth, uh, within maybe a few minutes here, simply because of the tidal effects, you'll see how Titan starts basically falling apart. Um, so this is tides, or I guess tidal effects, in action. Now, our planet Earth receives quite a lot of tidal effects from the Moon, and you can actually measure them in Universe Sandbox by going to a new simulation, placing Earth right here, then going in, into Actions, adding a Moon, and looking under Motion right here in Tidal Effects. So it gives you both the value of tidal heating and the tidal stress. This is in Newtons or in other units if you want. We're just going to be looking at Newtons, um, and basically what I want to look at is the value that you get from um, the supermassive black hole that's about 27,000 light years away from us. So this value, which is really, really small actually, uh, you might have to use different units even, um, this is from the moon, and the moon is right there at a distance of about 350,000-ish kilometers. Now, if I were to place the sun um, at a distance where the sun is, let's compare the value here. Let's see how much tidal effect the sun produces. So we're going to place it at a distance of about um, 150 million kilometers or one AU. And at this distance, if we go back to Earth now uh, and look at the tidal effects, you'll notice that it's going to be quite a lot less. Um, so there's actually an extra zero that's been added now, meaning that it's about 10 times less um, in terms of tidal force. Uh, other planets, like for example Jupiter and Saturn, also have certain effects, tidal effects on the planet, but not as dramatic as the Moon. Moon is actually the uh, sort of the highest uh, producer of tidal effect on our planet. But here we're going to be talking about the supermassive black hole. So Let's actually compare, or let, let's place it first and then compare this to some other objects that um, can be placed around the planet, just so you get an idea of how little tide uh, or tidal effects the supermassive black hole produces. So I'm going to erase the sun, and we'll see that um, the tidal effects will actually go down to zero. So everything is at zero right now. And we're going to place uh, the black hole Sagittarius A star, which, ha which has a mass of about 4.3 million masses of the Sun, at a distance of about 26, 27,000 light years. This is where it's most likely located in real life. So, right around here, th this right here is the distance of Earth to Sagittarius A star. 
Now, we're going to actually place Earth in, in orbit around uh, the black hole, just so it's a little bit more realistic. And as soon as we do that, you'll see that the speed of Earth right now is about 1.56 kilometers per second, because it's actually moving around uh, the supermassive black hole in a relatively circular orbit. And you can even see this orbit if I zoom out a little bit. Um, it's a really, really, really large orbit that takes something like... Okay, it's not even shown here, but it's probably about a billion years, possibly even more than that. Um, so, what about tides, though? The tidal effects here are so low that it doesn't even show the value. We can only look at the tidal heating effects, but the Newtons here are not even shown. So, we might have to just deal with this, because th these two values are related to each other. And the tidal heating effects here are significantly lower than they are from the Moon. Uh, the Moon value was, I think, approximately 200 gigawatt. This is just watt, and this is not even a billionth of a watt. Or actually, it is a billionth of a watt. It's about 1.1 billionth of one watt, which is very, very little. So... This kind of suggests to us that uh, the black hole, even though it is supermassive, has a very, 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 very tiny tidal effect on our planet. Now, let's just compare this to something more realistic, something that you can actually relate to. So I'm going to take an object, and specifically, I think we're going to take a teapot, because, I mean, most of us have one at home. It's like a kettle. So we're going to take this and place it in orbit around Earth, and basically see um, how far away from Earth this teapot has to be for us to have pretty much the same tidal effect. So, in other words, if I were to place uh, this teapot um, in, let's say, um, geostationary orbit, which is around here somewhere, 40,000 kilometers away from Earth, um, this right now, let's see how, how um, much tide this produces. This actually produces more tide than the supermassive black hole. As a matter of fact, approximately four times higher tidal effects from this little teapot right here um, orbiting in geostationary orbit than uh, we had from the supermassive black hole. Okay, how about we move it a little bit from here? And right now, at a distance of about 100,000 kilometers, it's producing a little bit less tidal effects. So it's somewhere in between. Actually, I'm going to try to find the location here where it basically produces just as much uh, tidal effect on the planet Earth as the supermassive black hole. And it looks like this is it. So this is a distance of about 77,000 kilometers. At this distance, this teapot, um, so here is the actual semi-major axis here. At this distance, this teapot produces pretty much the same value of tidal heating um, as the supermassive black hole at 27,000 light years away from us. In other words, this tiny little teapot that's only about 500 grams um, or half a kilogram in weight, it's only about 11 centimeters in radius, is acting on Earth with just as much tidal effect as the supermassive black hole from where it is located in our galaxy. Now, this is kind of mind-bending. It's, it's actually... It just shows you how insignificant the tidal effects are from the supermassive black hole um, at, at this distance. In other words, uh, the, the actual black hole, even though it, it is so massive, doesn't really affect our planet almost at all. Uh, this teapot seems to have more influence if it's in a closer orbit. Now, this distance is about twice as much as the geostationary orbit, or about a fifth of the orbit of the moon. Uh, but obviously, its mass and size is so, so insignificant. So, well, that's really all I wanted to investigate in this video. And I wanted to show you what kind of tides the supermassive black hole produces on our planet Earth. And so now you kind of know. In terms of actual uh, motion on the planet, it influences subatomic particles. It doesn't actually influence anything else. So as we orbit around the supermassive black hole and as our planet spins um, and rotates, only subatomic particles are affected by this gravitational influence, nothing else. Other than that, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. And hopefully now you know something more about both the Sagittarius A star and our planet Earth. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, 
बाय बाय